Ladies and gentlemen, this is enormous, huge, monumental, breathtaking, astounding, absolutely marvelous, fantastic news. ODI chief, well, Trump is replacing his, uh, he's replacing Dan Coats with John Ratcliffe. He's basically, basically replacing a tricycle with a Ferrari. He's replacing the equivalent of an amazing, he's, he's replacing the Titanic with an amazing yacht full of gorgeous, gorgeous people. It's unbelievable. And zero Fs given in on all, in every respect. He's tweeting. He's just gallivanting around. Trump is on cyber in cyberspace. He doesn't care. He can't be stopped. You can only hope to contain him. He's like Jordan in the 90s. And the and the left doesn't get it because Trump is like, hey. These are serious problems. They're like, how dare you? How dare you describe serious problems in such a manner? You've been presiding over serious problems. You're so rude. This isn't the soul of the country. These people, Trump's gonna get you. Trump's gonna get you. There's an old KRS uh, one song, one of the great, great rappers of all time. Love's gonna get you. This is Trump's gonna get you. Trump's gonna get you. Trump's gonna get you. Replacing basically James Clapper's love child in Dan Coates. Well, actually, I don't even. He, Coates might be older than Clapper. Who knows? With John Radcliffe, who is not only a loyalist, he's intelligent. He is basically Jim Jordan and Louis Gomer. He's he's a diplomatic Louis Gomer. Now, James Clapper is the guy who, well, oh, the, the Office of Director of National Intelligence is privy to every, to every intelligence agency, and the intelligence, or quote-unquote information or evidence, well, lack of evidence in this case with, with uh, the whole Trump-Russia debacle, they found nothing, there was never anything, there was no collusion, the media was wrong. And they fabricated and set up Trump in the most overt, transparent, easily deciphered. Just, it was so obvious. It was a, it was a poor setup. And they had the media to fall back on. But look, Dan Coates is out. So look who he has. He nominated Haspel. He nominated Pompeo at the State Department. Clinton, that was Clinton's old stomping grounds where she transferred top secret and special access program intelligence outside the U.S. government on servers. They're like, hey, funk his emails. Well, does she have servers? Wake me up when she has servers. And now he has the most important because Clapper was actually more important. Clapper was more important in terms of the synthesis of intelligence. So you had Brennan and Comey who were up to no good but they were only allowed to engage in shenanigans within their own department. The Office of Director of National Intelligence gathers all the information from Admiral Michael, Admiral Michael Rogers, Brennan, Comey, and it wasn't 17 agencies, it was only three. Yet another bogus line from the conspiratorial maniacs. And the, the Office of Director of National Intelligence is involved in the synthesis of intelligence. So the ODNI report last time actually told you. I can read it to you right now. Actually told you. Well, this is the Department of Homeland Security. The Department of Homeland Security does not provide any warranties of any kind regarding any information contained within. Do you love me? Well, I, I think I do. I love you, but I just want to let you know that I don't provide any warranties of any kind regarding any information that I've told you. What? I thought you said you loved me. Do you want to spend the rest of your life together with me? Well, I'm going to read you the Office of Director of National Intelligence when James Clapper was there and his disclaimer. 
stating that the United States government is not certain the DNC was hacked, is not certain that Russia even interfered in the election. High confidence. We're highly confident Russia did this, that, this, that, this, that. But high confidence generally indicates that judgments are based on qual high quality information from multiple sources. High confidence in a judgment does not imply that the assessment is a factor or certain such judgments might be wrong. Do you love me? Do you love me more than, other, more than that other woman? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with me? Yes or no? I'm highly confident I do, but that does not imply that the assessment is a factor of certainty. My love, such judgments might be wrong. What? What are you talking about? Why are you speaking this way? Confidence levels provide assessments of the quality and quantity of the source information that supports judgments. What's wrong with you? Are you seeing someone else? Consequently, we ascribe high, moderate, or low confidence uh, assessments. You are seeing someone else. No, honey, but there's, that's a moderate confidence assessment that I would not be seeing anyone else. Generally means that the information is credibly sourced and plausible, but not of sufficient quality or corroborated sufficiently to warrant a higher level of confidence. I have no idea what you're talking about. So this is, this is like they interfered in the election. <laughs> Uh, by informing the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated? Yeah. You know what? The o the Office of Director of National Intelligence, when it was under James Clapper, only has a high confidence assessment that the DNC was even hacked. We have no clue the DNC was even hacked. Such judgments might be wrong. Yeah. Now you're going to get it. Because you're going to get a guy who states, John Radcliffe states, that criminal activity took place. How do I know? Because he said it. Because he said it. Was it me? It was John Radcliffe. By the way, Clinton's running. So, she's running. She'll enter about October, November. But let's continue. This is John Radcliffe. The soundbite from this morning's interview with Maria, in which uh, Congressman John Ratcliffe uh, did not give any indication that he may have a big job in the offing, but this is what he said. What I do know as a former federal prosecutor is it does appear that there were crimes committed during... Oh! Let's listen to that again. Said. What I do know as a former federal prosecutor is it does appear that there were crimes committed during... Oh! Crimes committed? Really? This is the guy replacing Clapper. And they thought they were slick. Like, we're going to do all of this and no one's going to catch us. Wrong. Wrong. What I do know as a former federal prosecutor is it does appear that there were crimes committed. One more time now. What I do know as a former federal prosecutor is it does appear that there were crimes committed. New ODNI chief. What I do know as a former federal prosecutor is it does appear that there were crimes committed during the Obama administration. You talked earlier about Michael Flynn. His phone call with the Russian ambassador was a highly classified NSA intercept. Someone in the Obama administration leaked that call to the Washington Post. That's a felony. Um, felony. And 200 names unmasked, 500 warrants, all from a steel dossier purchased by Clinton. Everything that I repeat, every single segment... Like a madman, everything I repeat will be in all my writing in The Federalist, my latest article that was shared by Rush Limbaugh, and I'm going to give you a better... You know what? Below, you will see my writing in The Federalist, my writing in The Jerusalem Post. Um, you'll see a whole bunch of things. Share all my writing below and my, my books on Amazon. You'll see a, a, actually a much neater pinned comment you want to support my voice long term my patreon is below and i just want to thank everyone who, who who has supported me on patreon your support is greatly greatly appreciated but let's continue glenn simpson from fusion gps in talking about the steel dossier said under oath that he and bruce Orr did not meet until after the election Bruce Orr said under oath that they met three months before the election. One of them is not telling the truth. So he's really defending the president. And now, uh, Jeff, breaking news, we have it from the president himself in his Twitter. Let me read it. Quote, I am pleased to announce that highly respected Congressman John Ratcliffe of Texas will be nominated by me to be the director of national intelligence. During the Obama administration. So what I do know as a former federal prosecutor is it does appear that there were crimes committed during the Obama administration. You talked earlier about Michael Flynn. His phone call with the Russian ambassador was a highly classified NSA intercept. 
someone in the Obama administration leaked that call to the Washington Post. That's a felony. That is a felony. And like I said, I want to thank all my patrons. Michael R. Sheffield, thank you so very, very much, Mr. Sheffield. Thank you. And just everyone lately who's been supporting me, James Martin, uh, H. James Martin, thank you so very much. Rune Ann Norton, Ruth Ann Norton, Nor Norton, thank you. Uh, Lisa Figueredo, thank you. Um, you know, Douglas Friedman, thank you. Theta Lewis, thank you. Just thank you very much to everyone. Um, Michael R. Sheffield, thank you again. Very kind of you. And uh, James Martin, thank you. You know, it's just, it, it, it's all happening, ladies and gentlemen. John Radcliffe is the man. You're basically going from, let's say it's a boxing match. You're going from Jerry Nadler to Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh, my God. No, not, no. What are you talking about? Right now, of all times. I don't want that now. I don't want that now. Why would I want that now? Don't you know that, John, this is why AI will never work. Don't you know that Dan Coates is being replaced by John Radcliffe? This is huge news. Huge news. This is like, I mean, this is amazing. Because what, what's taking place is, I, I always stated, and if you watch this channel for a long time, I've stated consistently that Trump is going to wrestle control of the United States government from the Comeys of the world. I'm convinced now that Comey knows he's going to be indicted and doesn't care and thinks he'll get out of it because he has the goods on people. I'm convinced now that that all of these people know they're going to get indicted. Comey, Strzok, McCabe especially, Clapper, Baker, all of them. Lisa Page, all, well, Lisa Page maybe not. But I'm convinced, and they don't care. And this is this is this is who you're talking about. You're talking about John Radcliffe, who is going to be in charge with synthesizing information, which the ODNI report and the DHS report, the ODNI report combined all the nonsense from Brennan and Comey into a report that said, oh, yeah, such judgments might be wrong, but, you know, just run with it, media. And by the way, you must push back on the notion that the Russians interfered in it, and it's, a, it's an affront on our democracy. It is not, first of all, we have no clue the extent of their interference, so they didn't interfere. If you don't have a clue as to what happened, as to how many votes were altered, you can't say they interfered. You can't even say that one vote was altered because nobody looked at Facebook ads, and, and up until the second Clinton lost, they were confident. So how do you go from being overconfident to then in hindsight saying, that Russia interfered without even quantifying the interference. There's no data behind anything. Then they say, well, they hacked the DNC. I don't know. ODNI doesn't tell you that, actually. It says such judgments might be wrong. We don't know. But here's John Ratcliffe. What a day, ladies and gentlemen. What a day. And you got the IG report coming out. And you got Clinton is running in a couple of months. Oh, Lord. and we will not comment on any other conclusion. This is Radcliffe, the new Office of Director of National Intelligence Chief. Yeah. Or hypothetical. Or Director of National Intelligence. ...about the president. Now, you spent the last few hours of your life um, from Democrats trying to get you to answer all kinds of uh, hypotheticals about the president, and I expect that it may continue for the next few hours of your life. Um, I think you've stayed pretty much true to address one of the issues that, that I needed to. Which Hold on was one second. Those two and I rather with, large conspiracies. I, I agree with respect to that. But why this is important is an application and three renewal applications were submitted by the United States government to spy or surveil on Trump campaign Carter Associate uh, or Carter Page. And on all four occasions, the United States government uh, submitted the Steele dossier as a central piece of evidence. With What? What was that about? With respect to that. Now, the basic premise of the d dossier, as you know... 
Pesta Kavashie, everybody now. Was that there was a well developed conspiracy of cooperation between the Trump campaign and the Russian government, but the special count. Shut up! So, investigation didn't establish any conspiracy, correct? Well, I, uh, what I can tell you is that uh, the events that you are characterizing here now is part of another matter that is being handled by the Department of Justice. <laughs> The events that you're talking about, so Radcliffe gets him to just admit that he can't talk about the steel dust. He doesn't know Fusion GPS. He doesn't know um, uh, Glenn Simpson. He knows very well there was no precedent to exonerate anyone. It's not for the prosecutors who are blindly loyal to the Democratic Party. The whole thing is a sham. And, the, and, and people on the left are like, everything was done above board. It was the United States government trying to protect the country. Oh, from a foreign power. No one cares. The DNC could be allegedly hacked from here until eternity. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. The average American doesn't care. And the DNC and the DNC fraud lawsuit, Jared Beck, Elizabeth Beck, and Nico House waged. DNC lawyers said we're a private entity. We can we could do whatever we'd like. We could we could pick uh, uh, candidates in the smoke filled back rooms. We're a private entity. So if we cheated, uh, it was not fraud. But after all, it's a pri We're a private entity. Oh, since when is a private entity national secure part of national security? General Electric doesn't say, "Hey, we're part of national." Oh, well, <laughs> it's. In U.S. history, that unfortunately, corporations have said, hey, we're part of national security. But in today's world, a private company doesn't say, hey, we're part of national, this is national security. You know, we were hacked by another country. So you ha your for our foreign policy has to be dictated by Apple or by, um, you know, General GE. And in some cases it is, but that's a different story. Not in the way that the propaganda spin. Oh, our, our democracy was attacked. You cheated Bernie Sanders, who is a, I hate to say it, the guy was the one of the biggest cowards of all time, fomenting and spewing a de now debunked myth that Russia cheated, uh, Russia cheated Hillary by informing the na the country that burnt that he was cheated. So he was slapped in the face by Deborah Wasserman Schultz, and then and then allegedly Russia said, hey, "Hey everybody, Bernard Sanders was slapped in the face." I'm just letting you know. What you let us know that he was slapped in the face? Only we can cover that up and not know it. Yeah. What? Yeah. I thought you'd want to know. Now I sound like. Bella Lugosi. I thought you'd want to know that Bernard Sanders was slapped in the face. Will you let us know that Bernie Sanders was completely humiliated by Deborah Wasserman? No. She was forced to resign because you let us know this? This is an attack on our democracy. <laughs> Sorry. Now you got Dan Coates out. And he was one of those, like, Joe Scarborough type of people. I just don't know what Trump is doing. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm with you, everybody. I'm just a, you know, there's nothing I can do. You know, I'm, I'm with the working for orange crazy person. <laughs> You're out. You're out. Now you got John Radcliffe, who made Mueller. <sighs> Mueller didn't know where he was after John Radcliffe was done with him. So, ladies and gentlemen, what did we learn today? We learned that Trump doesn't care. And I think if you if you if you're a Democrat or whatever, you happen to watch this, which you almost certainly won't watch me at all, but I just think that you need to start draft hashtag draft Hillary. Run Hillary run because you need the only person who could unite the Democratic Party with all the good that she's done in her life. God bless her. Wonderful woman. Wonderful, beautiful human being, Hillary Clinton. Wonderful, beautiful, wonderful, 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 beautiful. She needs to run. Who are you going to have? The exhumed body? 
The, the, the walking cadaver? No. Botox Biden? No. Who are you going to have? One one millionth who failed her DNA test? Willie Brown's uh, ex? Uh, no. Come on. You need somebody with a stellar record in, in civil rights and human rights and a wonderful track record in foreign policy. Hillary Rodham Clinton. She suffered for you so much. You must, must nominate her and ask for her. Come on, New York Times writers. Come on. Do your job, Washington Post. Come on. Write the articles sooner than later. I expect an article very soon. Do we really want Biden? No, this is the, this is the way it's going to be phrased. I'm telling you, it's very soon. They're going to be like, you know what? Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. We want Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I said it. And what? And then they're going to be like on, Clint, on, on Twitter, oh my God, no. Oh yeah, you want the Russians to win? Do you want the Russians to win? You want Putin to win? You're going to let Putin interfere in our democracy? Draft Hillary today. Get her to be to run, which will mean she becomes the nominee because the Democratic Party is an extension of, the, of Bill and Hillary, and they're going to eventually obliterate the Democratic Party, which will be fantastic. But get them to run because they've done so much for the country, so much, so much good for humanity. And there's and she was cheated by Russia, who informed the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated, and with the Russian Facebook ads and the Buff Bernard coloring books, yeah. And when she runs, John Radcliffe and every other Trump official is going to do a number on them. Uh, just, just from the public record, <laughs> Lord knows what they are going to declassify. Lord knows what John Durham already has that William Barr declassified. Give me your thoughts below. Big day, huge day, amazing day. Tr Clinton's running again. And you're gonna, I'm telling you, you're going to see the articles. Yeah, I said it. We need Hillary. We need, what? What? No, what? And all the anarchist socialists, you know, cool people with, with, with dumb names. Louis Gomer's proctologist neighbor. <laughs> and then the little, little red icon. Oh, my God, we're so cool. And they're going to be, you know, the, the hands off this country, hands off, hands off. They're all going to vote for Clinton. <laughs> They're gonna fall in line. You wanna be a you wanna be a Trumper? No, I don't like Clinton either, but you wanna be a Trumper? Okay, no, you're oh you say you're not gonna vote for Clinton? Okay, you're you're a Trump supporter. No, I'm not a Trump supporter. Yes, you are a Trump supporter. No, I'm not a Trump supporter. Yes, you are a Trump supporter. No, I'm not a Trump supporter. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I'm blocking you. I'm blocking you. I'm reporting you. I'm reporting you. This is every day, every second of the day, at least a thousand, two thousand times on Twitter. On the left. <laughs> And I'm telling you, the I'm with the, they're going to be coming out in force. Girl power. And I agree with them. Do you want the Russians to, to um, do you want the Russians to have control of our democracy? No. We need Clinton to run again. She'll lose. Trump will win again. <laughs> it's going to be great. And everybody on the left who is like, Medicare for all, man. These are people who don't like me. People who I'm cool with, I respect. They're like, Medicare for all, Medicare for all, Medicare for all. Yeah, Clinton's not laughs at that. She she already stated it's not possible. And Democrats haven't voted on it, so they're playing everyone anyway. Every single thing the left allegedly stands for. Oh, you know, you know, Trump, Russia, Medicare for all. It's all going to just morph into Clinton 2020. And they're going to fall in line again, and they're going to realize that they have no uh, independent thought. They have no, um, they don't have the ability to choose their fate. They don't have free will. The Democratic Party and everyone who was, is within the Democratic Party, the liberal progressive, 98, 95%. Have no free will, and they talk a big game on on Twitter, and sometimes on YouTube. 
But at the end of the day, they're going to tell people to vote for Clinton in swing states. And at the end of the day, they're going to funnel a million dollars into two corporations. And at the end of the day, they're going to make false equivalencies and moral equivalencies that are so offensive, more offensive than anything Trump has said. And they're going to lose again. Give me your thoughts below. My website's going to come out very soon. It's going to give you everything you need. Even the latest tweets from Trump, that doesn't prove that he... uh, Did you see what he wrote? Yeah. Did you see what Clinton actually said in her... In her her decades, more offensive than anything Trump wrote. We just live in a hyper, hyper sensitive world that if, if... if the standards were used to judge what Clinton has stated and done, they would never nominate her twice. Twice. And they will. Give me your thoughts below. It's on. Trump has just, he's ready. He's taking the gloves off. I mean, there's orange dust everywhere. <laughs> he's, he's, there's orange dust everywhere. He's upset. He's going, he's going for the jugular. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Big day.